Sometimes with this government, though, we don't know whether to laugh or cry uh, when it comes to the way they spend money. This minister said in her fall update that the budget would be balanced in 2028. In her budget, she said it would be balanced never. Weeks before that budget, she said deficit spending fuels inflation and interest rate hikes. Then she added $60 billion of that fuel to the inflationary fire at a cost to $4,200 per family. Why won't the minister get off the backs of the hardworking Canadians and get rid of the inflationary taxes and deficits that they have to pay? Speaker, these Conservatives continue to relentlessly talk down Canada and the Canadian economy. But on this side of the House, we believe in Canada, and we know that Canada has the best economic performance of any country in the G7. And Mr. Speaker, let me give you some facts to back that up. After we tabled the budget, SP reiterated our AAA credit rating. That makes Canada one of only three countries in the G7 with a AAA credit rating, Mr. Yeah, yeah. Speaker. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Speaker, 2.5. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Impressive that the Deputy Prime Minister and the Prime Minister are attending really important meetings in Japan and the United States with really important people around the world. We're talking to the common people right here in Canada who can't pay their bills, Mr. Speaker. One in five skipping meals because they can't afford the inflationary carbon tax on food. 1.5 million eating at food banks, some asking for help with medical assistance and dying because they can't afford to eat, heat or house themselves. The minister admits deficits cost this inflation, yet she added 60 billion more of them. Why does she keep boosting prices while she travels abroad? Let's be really clear on what the Conservatives are insinuating. The Conservatives are trying to insinuate today that there is something elitist, that there is something that goes against the interests of regular Canadians when Canadian leaders attend G7 meetings. And I want to ask Canadians, do they think it is wrong for the Prime Minister to go to a meeting with the President of the United States, the Prime Minister of the UK, the Prime Minister of Japan? The Leader of the Opposition. No, we just wish he'd remember that the real people who pay the bills actually live right here in Canada. Yeah. Liberals forget about when they're jet setting around the world when this deputy finance met with this deputy minister is over in the states giving speeches at fancy American universities. She's forgetting about the people who are paying 12% more for food because of her carbon tax, forgetting nine in ten young people can't afford a home because she's driven up interest rates so much with her deficits, and forgetting the seniors that can't fill their fridges because food has become too expensive. Why won't she get and her and her prime minister get back on the ground in Canada? and stand up for the people who do the work here. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. You know, Mr. Speaker, someone who lives in government-provided accommodation, in a multi-room residence with a chef and a chauffeur, and someone who has been on the public payroll his entire professional life, should not suggest that our government is acting against the interests of Canadians when we attend meetings of the G7. We are proud to represent Canada at the top table in the world, and we're going to continue to do that. Prime Minister was up huffing and puffing last week, less than a week ago, about the Stellantis project, and now we find, six days later, that construction in the $5 billion facility has halted because of his incompetence. We see the same thing with the Trans Mountain Pipeline, which is now 300% over budget, many years past due, and still not complete. All this Prime Minister does is wrap our industry in red tape, weigh them down in taxes, and engage in total incompetence. Why is it that he can never bring it home when it comes to jobs, paychecks, and industry for our country? Mr. Speaker, from a leader and a party 
that is on record opposing the historic transformational VW investment made by our government, that question is frankly ridiculous. And I'll tell you what, Mr. Speaker, I'll tell you who couldn't get TMX built. It is the members opposite. And I will tell you, Mr. Speaker, which government is going to get that pipeline built. Our government is going to get the job done. 